Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's what's for dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. I also have a little bonus quick and easy dessert to share with you. Our dinners that we made were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I made some ham steaks. Now in my freezer, I had this sweet potato casserole. I got this back around the holidays from Aldi. This only comes around at the holidays and I've mentioned this before on my channel it is so delicious it is a little bit pricey for the size but a little bit goes a long way it is so sweet and rich but I need to use this up and get this out of my freezer so I'm going to cook it according to the package instructions Next, I'm going to make my ham glaze. Now, like I've mentioned before, I don't measure when I make this. I apologize. I just eyeball everything. I tried to kind of measure it today, and I don't know what I was thinking. I prepared enough glaze for like a normal size ham instead of the little ham steaks, but that's okay. To this bowl, I just added some brown sugar and then a little bit of honey. You can also add maple syrup or agave or a sugar replacement. I'm then going to add some Dijon mustard. You could use whatever kind of mustard you like. And then I always like to thin this out with a little bit of liquid. Sometimes I just use water. Sometimes I'll do pineapple juice or Coca-Cola or root beer. Today I had this cherry Coke on hand, um, so I'm just going to add a little splash of that. I mixed up the glaze. I'm going to brush it on both sides of my ham steaks, and I just cut the ham steaks in half um, just so they would fit in the pan a little bit better and more in little serving sizes. I'm going to cover this with foil and this is going to go into a preheated oven. It was set at 350 degrees. I baked it for about 25 to 30 minutes until it was warm through. Just make sure you cook the ham according to your package instructions. I know most hams nowadays in the supermarkets are um, already cooked, but you know, just make sure you've got a ham that's already cooked. For one of the sides, I have this can of seasoned collard greens. I'm just going to warm them up in a skillet on top of the stove. I do like to add in just a tiny, tiny little pat of butter and usually some salt and pepper and a little garlic powder. Now, for the other side dish, I made Mandy in the making green beans. I know, I know, I've talked about this so many times on my channel, but I really like these green beans. Um, I'll have a link to the video down in the description box below. Hubby doesn't love green beans, and I will say he does like them this way, um, but I had those collard greens on hand, and he prefers collard greens, so I just went ahead and warmed those up for him. But here are the green beans, and then we've got the ham steaks, those warmed up collard greens, and the sweet potato casserole. This was our Sunday dinner and Gary asked if we had any rolls, which I did have two Sister Schubert rolls in the freezer that needed to be used up. So I went ahead and baked those according to the package instructions. To go along his collard greens, Gary loves pepper vinegar. This little bottle was my grandpa's. I got it um, when he passed away in February. And then for the rolls, we have this cinnamon honey butter that we got at the farmer's market. If you saw last week's What's for Dinner video. So I'm just going to set that out for our rolls. All right, here's a picture of the plate. So we've got the ham steaks. The, Gary's got the collard greens. I've got the green beans. And then we've got the sweet potato casserole and rolls. This was delicious. Perfect Sunday dinner. The next day was Memorial Day, and I just did some barbecue hot dogs. I started out by making a macaroni salad. I just shared this like a month ago, I believe, on my channel. So far, it's my favorite macaroni salad I've made. So I'll have that video linked in the description box below if you'd like to check that out. And then I also made some deviled eggs. I've also shared this before on my channel. I just do it simple. Hard-boiled eggs, mix up the yolk with some mayonnaise, mustard, relish, a little salt and pepper, sprinkle it with paprika, and we're done. I do have a separate video where I show how we make our barbecue hot dogs, but it couldn't be easier. It's not even really a recipe. All you do is just grill up your hot dogs like you normally would, and then right at the end, you brush them on all sides with barbecue sauce, and if you've never had barbecue hot dogs like this, you have to give it a try. The barbecue sauce just gets caramelized on the outside of the hot dog. It's, it's just really good. Just use your favorite barbecue sauce. Use your favorite hot dogs. Here is a picture of my plate. Gary ate later this evening than I did, and I'm just like my mom. Her and I both like barbecued hot dogs, just plain. No bun, no nothing, just plain. And then I've got some of the macaroni salad and the deviled eggs, and this was delicious. 
I was really craving just like a really cheesy, comforting pasta dish. And I remembered this chicken tetrazzini that I made. Gosh, it's been a while ago. Um, but I first saw it on Life with Valerie Rose. I'll have her channel linked down below. I did share more kind of in-depth step-by-step um, -step instructions in a what's for dinner video. So I'll link that video down below as well for you. Uh, but I'll just kind of quickly walk you through it tonight. Here are the sauteed veggies. Just have some onions, mushrooms, garlic, salt, pepper, and cooked it in just a little bit of butter for maybe about five to seven minutes until they were tender. In this skillet, I've got the chicken tetrazzini about to go in the oven. Basically, you just make a bechamel sauce and then add in uh, white cheddar cheese and then a little Parmesan cheese. I like to add for a little extra flavor. Valerie suggested that. That's how I did it the last time, so I kept it the same way. Added in my cooked spaghetti noodles, my shredded rotisserie chicken, some peas, and those sauteed veggies. Put it in a grease casserole dish. Covered it with a little more mozzarella cheese. You could do breadcrumbs if you prefer, but I like the cheesy topping. And then I baked it at 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes. If you want to, you can broil it for a minute or two so it gets really nice and brown on top, but this is how mine looked and I didn't broil it. But once you pull this out of the oven, I would suggest letting it sit for about 10 minutes before you dig into it. I was at Target earlier this day when I kind of decided to do like a cheesy pasta dish and I grabbed this Texas toast. It's the five cheese. I'm just going to bake it according to the package instructions. Here is a picture of my plate. I've got some of the chicken tetrazzini, the cheese toast, and then I just did some side salads and everything was delicious. And Gary did eat later than I did. And if you're new to my channel, uh, my husband Gary, he goes to um, Krav Maga, a Krav Maga studio, a few nights a week and works out. And so a lot of times he'll wait and eat when he gets home from that. So that's why sometimes he eats later than I did. But like I said, this was delicious. So for dinner the next night, we were doing like a little date night and it was Gary's pick and he had really been wanting to go to this place. It's called Sabadi Cafe. It is in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you're familiar with the Nashville area, it's about like 30 minutes southeast of Nashville. We don't get out there a lot. It's kind of a drive and to be honest, Murfreesboro's Murfreesboro's <laughs> traffic, that's a mouthful, sucks. So we don't go out there very often, but he had really, really been craving this night absolutely love it. Um, I mentioned this, I think on Instagram maybe, um, but in high school, my best friend, she's Vietnamese and my high school college boyfriend is Laotian and his family owned a Laotian Thai Vietnamese restaurant. And so I love that kind of cuisine and the family that owns Sabadi Cafe is Laotian. So I was like, yes, let's go. And it is, is so incredibly delicious. Let me show you what we got. So first up, this was all Gary. I like spring rolls, but I don't like love them. He absolutely loves them. And this was honestly pretty much the whole reason he wanted to go. He says their spring rolls are the best spring rolls he's ever had. And just in case you're a little confused, Chinese style spring rolls are kind of like in an egg roll wrapper, similar to that, not exactly the same thing. And they're deep fried. And so if you're looking at these thinking that's not a spring roll, it is. Vietnamese Thai spring rolls are these like rice, um, noodle rice paper, not noodle, <laughs> rice paper wrappers instead. Uh, some people call them summer rolls, but whatever you call them, they're delicious and he loves their peanut sauce. So he got extra peanut sauce. And then I got their pork egg rolls. We split that. I had one and he had one and it had like a sweet chili sauce. Next, Gary got a little bowl of their Tom Ka soup. He got the chicken. And then for his entree, he did the combination pad thai. It was delicious. And for me, I, of course, got the latna. I love, love, love this dish. It is so delicious. And this whole meal was just so yummy. I, I want to go back like now. <laughs> it was so good. Dinner the next night, I kind of threw together based on some things I had on hand that needed to be used up. I'm going to call it Greek chicken. So here I have some chicken tenders. I bought these at Food Lion a while back on Markdown. They were in my freezer. I needed to use them up, so I thawed them. And I had a little bit of this Gerard's Greek feta vinaigrette on hand that really needed to be used up. And that dressing is really good, by the way. If you see that, I recommend you give it a try. So I added the chicken tenders and the vinaigrette to a bag. I didn't have quite enough dressing. I mean, I probably had enough, but I wanted to add a little bit more. And so I took one of these little Olive Garden Italian dressing cups. I get these at the Dollar Tree. Um, and I just added one of the cups to the Ziploc bag, popped it into the refrigerator, and let it marinate for just a few hours. 
I intended to grill the chicken this night, but it was storming pretty bad, so I just decided to cook these up in the air fryer. I removed the chicken from the marinade and sprinkled some of the cavender seasoning on both sides, popped it into my air fryer basket, and I cooked it at about 350 degrees for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes or so. It just depends on what temperature you're cooking it at, and you know if you're using chicken tenders, chicken breast, just cook it until your chicken's at least 165 degrees. I had a zucchini that was looking a little sad, so I cut it up into, I think, eighths or quarter. I don't remember how I cut it. I just cut it into sticks. <laughs> and then I toss it with a little bit of olive oil and some of the Kinder's seasoning. This is just salt, pepper, and garlic. Now, to go along with this, I had a bag of this ready rice. It's the rice pilaf. This was in my pantry. Needed to use it up, so I just popped it in the microwave according to the package instructions. And when I was at Target the other day, I kind of had in my head that I was going to do something Greek. So I grabbed this tzatziki yogurt dip to go along with it. All right, here is a picture of our plates. And I was really not hungry at all this night. So I just did like a really small bowl for myself. For my little bowl, I laid down some of the rice pilaf, added some of the chopped up chicken, some grape tomatoes, the zucchini, some of that tzatziki, and then I had some feta cheese in my fridge that needed to be used up, so I added that. And then when I was at Target, I'd also grabbed some mini pitas, so I'll just warm those up. Now for Gary's plate, I laid down the rice pilaf, added some of the chicken, the feta cheese, some kalamata olives, the pita bread, and the zucchini. And then Gary had been at the gym this night, and he really hadn't eaten much that day, and he was starving by the time he got home. So I also did a quick side salad um, for him. And that was our dinner this night and it was delicious. It was quick and easy. And I got to clear several things out of the freezer, pantry and fridge that needed to be used up. If you follow me for a while, I know I've mentioned this before and you've probably noticed, but I don't make a lot of desserts that often unless it's for a specific video that I'm filming or like a special occasion. I just don't make a lot of them. One, I'm not a super big sweets person, but two, most dessert recipes, um, are not really conducive to two people. I mean, we don't need a whole nine by 13 cake sitting around for just the two of us. So I don't make them very often, but tonight, like I said, Gary was starving and I didn't eat a lot for dinner, but you know, later in the evening I did get kind of snacky. And so I thought I'd make some little Nutella fruit pizzas. So all I did was take the pita bread, warm it up a little bit, spread a layer of Nutella over it. And then we added some sliced up fruit. I had some strawberries, bananas, and blackberries. And it was just a yummy yummy little snack you cannot go wrong with nutella and strawberries and bananas it's just a delicious combination okay so for dinner the next night i had kind of a fiasco with my girl which i'll explain in the next dinner um but by the time i dealt with that i just was not in the mood to cook um so i just looked in the freezer and the pantry i had a box of the trader joe's turkey corn dogs i really like these they're pretty good i like to cook them in the air fryer and to go along with it, I just got a box of the uh, Great Value Thick and Creamy Macaroni and Cheese. I like to add, of course, a little butter and milk like the package calls for, and then a slice of American cheese. So the package of Trader Joe's corn dogs had air fryer instructions on them. I can't remember now what it was. It was like 360 or 375 for maybe 14 minutes or so. So I just followed it according to the package instructions, like I said, mix up the macaroni and cheese and adding in that slice of cheese makes it just a little more creamy and it adds a little more cheese flavor and here are the plates we just got the corn dogs and the macaroni and cheese and then gary dipped his corn dogs in ketchup i did a combination of ketchup and mustard and that was our dinner this night Last but not least, I tried a new recipe for grilled balsamic caprese flank steak. That's a little bit of a mouthful, but this was delicious. I'll, of course, have this recipe and all of the recipes from today's video in the description box below. So here's what we're going to use for the steak in the marinade. I've got a flank steak and then some minced garlic, Dijon mustard, balsamic vinegar. You can use olive oil. Here I've got some avocado oil, salt, pepper, and honey. I'm going to mix up the marinade ingredients and then combine that along with the flank steak in a Ziploc bag and then pop this into the refrigerator to marinate. Now you could do a few hours, but overnight really would be best. To go along with this, I tried a new recipe for a grilled summer vegetable salad. Now, disclaimer, this was a delicious salad. 
but this is quite a bit of prep work. It's not hard, but there is quite a bit of prep work for this recipe. So here's everything we're gonna need. First up, we've got some corn. Fresh corn is best. I bought this package of already shucked corn. It was on sale at Kroger this week. I have a zucchini and squash that I got from the farmer's market, and real quick, I halved the recipe and it made a ton. I've got an eggplant, bell pepper. Now I had a little bit of red and green, so I'm just gonna use what I've got. I have some grape tomatoes, red onion, feta cheese. The recipe called for, I think blue cheese or gorgonzola. I'm not a blue cheese fan or gorgonzola fan, but I did have feta on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then we've got some salt, pepper, Dijon mustard, a fresh lemon, which we're gonna need the zest and juice. The recipe called for asparagus, but I had green beans, so I'm just gonna use what I've got. And then last but not least, the recipe said to use an herb-infused oil. At first, I didn't think I had any on hand, so I was just gonna use regular olive oil and Italian seasoning, but I was going through my pantry and I found some of this basil-infused olive oil, so that's what I'm gonna use. All right, so I veered off the recipe a little bit doing the prep work just because the recipe said to basically lay everything out prepped and then brush everything with olive oil on all sides. And I was like, I am not fixing to brush the grape tomatoes and bell peppers and the green beans on all sides with oil. That'll take me forever. <laughs> so what I did was I just took the a big bowl, added the grape tomatoes, the bell pepper, and the green beans. I'm gonna drizzle over some of that olive oil and then season it up with some salt and pepper. I'm gonna give it a good toss and then set that to the side. All right, here are the rest of the veggies all prepped. So what I did was I took the eggplant, I sliced it lengthwise um, into four different pieces. I sprinkled both sides of the eggplant with some salt, allowed it to sit for about 30 minutes, rinsed the salt off and patted the eggplant slices dry with a paper towel, pat them really, really well. For the corn, like I said, I got the corn in the package that was already husked and had, you know, all the little hairs or corn silks pulled off. Um, so that made it easy for me for the corn. For the red onions, I, of course, peeled them and cut them into quarters. Then for the zucchini and squash, I cut them in half widthwise and then cut them in half again lengthwise. And then once I got everything cut, I brushed everything on all sides with some of that oil and then seasoned it with some salt and pepper. Next, I'm going to make the vinaigrette for the salad and I like to make vinaigrettes in a mason jar. I think I saw Reed Drummond do this on the Pioneer Woman like years and years ago and I've done it that way ever since. I love it, it's so easy. To a mason jar, I'm gonna add the olive oil, Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, and then I'm gonna grate in some of the lemon zest. I'm gonna add in the fresh lemon juice and then the vinaigrette will be ready. Now, to be honest, I tasted this and I wanted, I felt like it needed a little punch and I should have added a little vinegar to it. I didn't, but it was still good. Um, but all I did was put a lid on that and give it a really good shake and then I'm gonna set that to the side. All right, so remember when I showed you the corn dog dinner just before this, I said there was a grilling fiasco. That is where this happened. So everything that you've seen up until now happened the same night of the corn dog dinner. Uh, but at this point, once I got everything prepped and ready, I went outside to preheat the grill. And I, I think it was the squirrels because we've been kind of having a disagreement, me and the squirrels that keep getting into my bird feeders. But anyway, I think it was the squirrels. Can't prove it. But either way, there was a big hole in the line that goes from the propane tank to the grill and so couldn't use the grill and went to heat up the blackstone grill and it was being moody and did not want to heat up and so I was hot and tired and I was just like screw it and ended up doing the corn dog dinner put everything that I had prepped into the fridge and then ended up cooking it and finishing it the next night when I finally got the blackstone working <laughs> so I just cooked up the veggies on the blackstone until they were tender and then cooked the steak on both sides until it was cooked to our liking I let the steak rest for about 10 minutes all right, here's some of the veggies once they came off the grill. And don't those look so good? I added all the veggies to a bowl after I gave them a rough chop. And then I added in the vinaigrette. And that was a salad. And to garnish it, we're going to add some feta cheese and some chopped basil. 
And last minute, I decided to serve this up with our dinner because we needed to use it up. This is the basil pesto sourdough bread we got at the farmer's market the week before. So, so delicious. So I just sliced that up. All right, here are a picture of the plates. So we have some of that salad. I served it with a dish of fresh watermelon, a slice of that bread. And then to finish off the flank steak, I sliced it against the grain after it rested. I garnished it with some of the grape tomatoes that I had grilled for the salad. Just grilled a few extra. And then for the caprese part of it, it was supposed to have some mozzarella cheese, but the mozzarella cheese was yucky, so I skipped it. Added some chiffonaded basil and then added a drizzle of the Trader Joe's balsamic dressing. Now, the recipe does tell you to save half of the marinade before you add the steak. Save half of it to drizzle on top, but I didn't read the recipe thoroughly, obviously. Um, and so I used the whole marinade, but it's fine. It, it all worked out in the end. And I know this was a chattier dinner than normal, um, but I wanted to share it with you to show you we all have things that don't go right, things, you know, that fail. We burn things, you know, we accidentally pour in too much salt you know whatever it might be we all have mess ups in the kitchen and it's fine just roll with it and I don't know if you all remember but Stacy from Let's Cook Y'all they haven't put out videos in a while but she and her husband used to have what they call a sonic night if something failed they would just go to sonic so you know everything will work out whether you have to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whatever it's fine <laughs> but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got some dinner ideas if you did like this video hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already have a great rest of the day bye, -bye.